Welcome to the glorious Souls Grown Deep Like the Rivers, Black Artists from the American South. I'm incredibly excited about this exhibition. A lot of the work that is featured here presents something of a departure from the type of work that is traditionally exhibited in the Royal Academy in that the artists are all black American Southerners and none of the artists featured have had formal artistic training. I absolutely adore this piece, Stars of Everything by Thornton Dial. It's made from a selection of found materials. So as you can see, there are paint cans, there are spray cans. He works with tin and aluminium. This central character that we see almost jumping out of the piece is called by Dial a pickup bird. And it is a creature that he sees as sort of symbolically representing himself, a being that looks to the past or looks to what's been discarded and thinks about how that can be creatively reimagined in order to create a better present and a better future. It is a tradition that we see often in black American culture and in black diasporic cultures. This tendency towards mixing, blending and superimposing of innovation, of creating something new and dynamic from the past, the repurposing of objects so that they are imbued with something more and beyond what their original purpose was. Sarah Lockett's Roses is an offering to Sarah Lockett from her grandson, Ronald Lockett. It is very informed by the tradition of quilt making. Sarah was herself an esteemed quilt maker and Ronald learnt much of his artistic practice through observing his grandmother working. This piece is made from cut tin and enamel on wood. The use of materials, which are hard and sharp, is very different to the softer, more comforting type of material that one would associate with quilts, which also feature heavily in this exhibition. So this is very much Ronald's reimagining of that tradition of the quilting process. Marlene Bennett-Jones' Triangles is a beautiful contemporary example of the tradition of quilt making. And the G's Bend area that she comes from is one that is particularly unique. The quilt makers of G's Bend, Alabama are direct descendants of the enslaved people who worked the cotton plantation established in 1816 by Joseph G. The tradition of patchwork was born of a scarcity of materials coupled with the ingenuity of the quilt makers who would salvage fabric scraps and textile remnants, including flour and rice sacks, and worn disused clothing for their quilts. Here, Bennett Jones has made something aesthetically and visually beautiful and stimulating, but still deeply grounded in that sense of tradition and the past. And He Hung His Head and Died is a sculpture by the artist Joe Minter. In this piece, we see the representation of Christ's crucifixion and the three crosses at Calvary. Again, we see that tendency towards breathing new life and meaning into old objects. Much of his work and creative output is concerned with documenting the history, the 400 years of Africans in America. And at his home in Birmingham, Alabama, he has a huge outdoor exhibition, the African Village in America, which demonstrates that tradition in much African and African diasporic art, of art not necessarily being something that is removed from its context, that is removed from the community and put into kind of rarefied spaces, but is something that is open and accessible and a part of everyday life. Something that documents, records and pays homage to a history that is all too often ignored and misrepresented. 
These works are valuable and important, not just because they deal with overcoming oppression and racism and state-sanctioned violence, but also because they reveal a flash of the spirit, the creative practice of a culture specially armed with an unparalleled ability for improvisation and the realization of spiritual transcendence through material metaphors. I cannot overstate the importance of this exhibition.